got Marmite? Marmite on toast? Oh. I don't think I've ever seen you eat Marmite on toast. Just fancied it. There's a date in the cupboard, so you know. <laughs> Naughty. Good morning, everybody. We are doing something quite exciting today. What is that? Somebody's interested in everything. And anything you can be interested in, you'll find others who are. We're kind of, we're doing a video that we don't really know what we're going to find. And I know we do that often anyway, because we just kind of go for it. We know about the history of what we're doing, but we're not really sure exactly what we're going to find today, which is really quite cool. Huh? What are you doing? Oh, I've just brushed my teeth. Cool. Ready? Yeah. Well, Ooh. I've got no shoes on. Or coat on. Okay. I also okay. didn't say we're actually, we're meeting two people today. Oh? Uh, Elliot and Joe. I was gonna say who's Elliot and Joe then? I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's Elliot and Joe. Hello, Elliot and Joe, everybody. This is Paul. Uh, hello, hello. <laughs> Joe, this is Paul. I'm Hi, Joe. Just Rebecca, I hello. Hello. tell because. Yeah, because uh, I may have seen you before ish on camera <laughs> many times. Maybe. Yeah. Cool, brilliant. All right, I think we're going to walk that way. Awesome. We'll see you up for that. You think? Yes, cool. yes. Okay. And so, therefore, it's so important to consider this question what do I desire? Okay, so I do feel this video could just be the four of us larking around. I'm down. <laughs> but I'll try and give you a little bit of context to, to what we're doing today. We're currently in the Wadbury Valley, which is near Mel's in Somerset. Um, and it sort of gives a little bit of a follow on to the two canal videos we made, the Dorset and Somerset. So we often make videos about old railways, old canals and the landscape and how people interacted with the landscape. But today we're going to go a little bit further back in time. So we'll step back into the Industrial Revolution window and in particular the window of a family called the Fussels. So we just spent quite a while trying to find um, a crossing point because it says there's a public bridal way across the river, the River Mells. Yeah, you tried to make us go for a log. Well, there, there was a log, it was looked great. It was yeah. a thin but, uh, branch. Rebecca pointed out that there's actually a bridge, so we took the sensible option there. Right, it's getting, it's getting wetter, which is uh, umbrella weather. Before we get to where we're going, which is probably about half a kilometre away, you need to go and watch Elliot and Joe's YouTube channel. They're making a video today about where we are, um, and we, we always like to and they point people in the direction of channels that we watch ourselves, and we've got the opportunity to do that today. So I'll put a link in the description below. Go and watch Elliot and Joe's channel, because it's great. There still look a bunch of girls with the umbrellas. What's that all about? I haven't got an umbrella. In 1710, a man called James Fussell, James Fussell III, was born. And by the tender age of 34, he obtained here a 99-year lease for, uh, to create a works over and in the Mells River. Now that gives you a little bit of an idea of exactly what we're looking for today. So we finally found um, what is the, I want to say, the eastern end of the Mel's work. So the, the factory and the workings that James Fussell started here in, what, 1744, 1745, this is now the eastern end of it. And there's some beautiful pictures from up in the valley, uh, the other side of the valley, they're looking across. probably four or five hundred yards of workings from this point forward. So we're gonna, we don't, exactly, we don't know exactly what we're looking for, but again, if you go to a website, which I'll put in the link below from Derek Hunt, um, you'll see all these old pictures and these old workings and all the information on it. But we'll try and, um, we'll try and guide you through a little bit of that. 
How's that experience for you, Rebecca? It's like a little hallway, it's well cool. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. So, so what we're on now is all the buildings that are probably now 30 feet above the water. So I don't think here that we're going to find any of the old wheel working. So basically, so James Fussell set up his works here, um, James Fussell III, 1750-ish. And this section we're on now is all the sort of the upper buildings. And basically he just realised that obviously if you can harness the power of water, you can make stuff and you can use wheels. And when you've got a turning wheel, you can do all sorts of things. We'll come to a little bit more of that in a moment. every step of the way there's something different there's something else now and here's the first example we've seen on our journey west of how they really did channel the water probably to get it flowing a lot faster i guess but um right below me now you can see what almost looks like a lock gate and um, holes in the walls sadly i don't think we're going to get down that far yet it looks it looks almost canal like rebecca just questioned if this actually was the old canal um of course that was further north but that section there really does look like um, a canal lock. Um, so just to continue the story of the Fussell family and their importance in the in the landscape here. So James Fussell III had three sons. The son called James, James the Fourth, was born 1748. Now, he really took the reins of the business along with one of his brothers, Austin, I think. Within sort of uh, 40 years or so, they had 250 people working here at this site. Um, and they were making all kinds of agricultural cutting tools, came up with many, many different inventions and wonderful bits and pieces, including, of course, a sprocketed chain. Captain Hydrate says drink water. Is this a paid sponsored ad, that, Rebecca? Um, well, it's a school bottle, I've nicked it off right. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, back in the uh, main building over there, they had big tilt hammers. Everything they did was, was utilising the power of the water, turning wheels, grinding um, knives and blades. And they were exporting them all over uh, Europe, all over the Americas as well. Um, a real thriving business. James uh, the Fourth himself also took upon himself to to invent different things. And one of the things he was heavily involved with is the Fussell's balance lock, of course, on the Dorset and Somerset Canal. And um, for that, he patented a particular type of chain. And the chain was different to the normal chain, with just round links. It was a sprocketed chain, and therefore it was able to go over uh, cog-like wheels. Um, and make the lifting of things smooth. And with that in mind, he built the Fussell's balance lock. We could lift boats up, um, raise them and lower them. So instead of a traditional lock where the whole of the water goes down, he could build these uh, lifting mechanisms with a sprocketed chain, which didn't rock the boat, as it were. Um, and I guess that's where the whole sprocketed chain came from, uh, the Fussell's balance lock. And James Fussell IV, who basically um, lived and breathed everything in this area. One take. It wasn't one take. What was it like four? Well, that was a, it. Was a whole take. Yeah, but it's I just you'd already done it three yeah. or four times. <laughs> so Elliot and Joe are a little bit braver than us in some of the things they do, um, which probably pays off in terms of the filmography in the, the cinema, cinema graphics, cinema graphics. Cinematography. cinematography on their channel that's why we love what Elliot and Joe do because they base their channel around everything cinematographic oh my god Cinema cinematography I can't say the word and hence now it's only just stopped raining and they're getting their drone out and it's going to pay off um, so we'll repeat go watch their channel it's all, great fun all I can hear is hilarity though to be fair yeah they're just larking around. they spend half their time like which is good <laughs> what this is um Pablo and ravioli <laughs> ravioli I love ravioli that's the pasta right yeah yeah. Pablo loves ravioli. Pablo loves ravioli. Oh, that's sweet. Pablo and ravioli. That's our new uh, new channel name. Okay. Rename it. We've done Shall that like we? four times in the last like, yeah, two right. weeks, so you know. I think it's brilliant. We are trendsetters. We are. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Basically geniuses. That's a that's a big drone, gents. What what drone have we um? um that's a Mavic, Mavic right? Mavic yeah, two. Mavic two. It's a zoom version. Yours is bigger than his. Yeah, it's a lot bigger. Lot. I'm getting drone <laughs> complex. <laughs> And 
here's a great example of probably what is a man-made uh, cutting. So we've got the river over that side just past Rebecca um, and here is a cutting which again probably was used to channel the water down here for whatever reason. Perhaps they had a wheel in there somewhere. Um, I think we're in luck because we just climb over that. There's a lot up here, or well, certainly an old building next to the channel. Um, and yeah, without doubt, this is going to be part of the works. The amount of remains here, every sort of 30, 40 yards, you find something different. Another huge old building there. And again, this is right above the water, so this would have probably been where things really happened. Um, we are down at water level pretty much. Wish I could find an old wheel, but I don't think we're going to. Oh, look at that. So yet again, another channel um, off of the main river, and it comes down to this wonderful piece of uh, old ironworks in the form of a weir and yeah so I guess if they close that up completely they could channel the water right underneath their works so this is this is a perfect example of how they would manipulate the water so they'd have been able to channel this we've seen now on this section we've seen about four or five different buildings along here where this is exactly how they got the water underneath it yeah so they channeled it away from the main river stuck it underneath all the buildings and all the wheels would have turned and they could have conducted all the all the workings that they wanted to just wonderful, look at that. All this in the name of cinematography. There, I said that word. I can yes, never, you did, you I said the word. Yes, cinematography. <laughs> and after all, if you do really like what you're doing, it doesn't matter what it is, you can eventually turn it, uh, you could eventually become a master of it. Um, Right, so we're just walking back now towards the east to where we're parked via the, the, the amazing fossil works, the iron works. Um, right here is the main part of the building. We can't get in there because it's all under construction at the moment, so we don't really want to climb the wall or fence because you can see it's quite high. Um, what we're going to try and do is get you guys to subscribe to Elliot and Joe. So the channel will be in the description below in the pinned comment. Um, we love these guys because not only do they do amazing cinematography, but they also, I said that word again, I can say it in full. <laughs> in full. But they're also <laughs> lovely gents, and we really admire their work. So go and go and subscribe to their channel now. And uh, for today, we shall call it um, the end of today's film. Uh, so <laughs> for, that's, 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 it doesn't work, does it? <laughs> I'm waffling a lot today. Right. Thanks for watching, peeps. We'll see you uh, probably next week.